morning. Good morning. And welcome to King of Praise Ministries. I pray that you have a blessed week. And we just want to welcome you aboard with our services today. Um, thank you. Um, <laughs> Today we had Sunday school. We opened up a Sunday school this morning at 9 o'clock a.m. with minister and trainer Michael Eccles. And he taught about dealing with our fears. Mm -hmm. It was a great lesson. And if you get an opportunity, please go to our Facebook page or YouTube so you can get the lesson. Um, his actual lesson came from chapter Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 to 27. And his devotional came from Psalms 107, verses 23 through 32. So please, I don't know about you, but every now and then you feel fear. Mm -hmm. Fear to move forward. Fear about what's going on around us. Fear about ministry. Fear about the job, family situations. And you know, when we practice fear, we're showing how much faith that we lack in God. And remember, God is our all in all. He can do everything. Mm -hmm. yes, and instead yeah. of worrying or fretting or being fearful, we need to turn all that over to Jesus. Because don't you know, he cares for us. Mm -hmm. He provides for us. He's there to answer our call. All we got to do is ask. Amen. But in asking, be obedient to God's will as well. Next week's lesson is going to be Healed by Faith. And the devotional readings will come from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. And the scriptures are going to come from Matthew chapter 9, verse 18 to 26. Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. And Luke chapter 8, verses 40 through 56. So we can get the full story about being healed by faith. Next Sunday is our communion Sunday. So if you have not received any communion cups or if you need communion cups, please reach out to the ministry, email us or text us. Give us a call and let us know that you need them and we can either drop them off or ship them to you. Okay. And then on June 26th, we're going to have another outreach ministry where we're going to go back to Baltimore um, to give out survival bags. We have a lot of things and we thank all those who have contributed to us because we, we really got a lot of stuff this time around. So um, we look forward to doing that on June 26th. Okay, let's um, open up with a word of prayer and then I'll read the scripture reading for today. Father God, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just thank you, Father, for your many blessings, Lord. We thank you, Father, for God being our creator because you made these bodies, you made these minds, and you know everything that's going on with us, Lord. Father God, we just present all things to you, Father God, to make us the bold warriors that you called us to be, Lord. Yes, Father God, we just thank you, Father, for a great day, for allowing us to see this day, Lord. We thank you, Father, for a reasonable portion of health and strength, Father God. Father God, we just thank you, Father, that you continue to watch over each and every one of us, Lord. Father God, I just cast everyone to you, Lord, that you would give them what they stand in need of, Father. Whether it may be healing, Father, whether it may be encouragement, Father, whether it may be um, just some strength, Father God. Give them what they stand in need of, Lord. And we just present all things to you, Father God, because we know we serve an awesome and a mighty God. It's nothing we can do without you, Father God, because truth be told, we couldn't even open up our eyes or lift a finger if it was not for you. And we just thank you, Father, in advance. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, before I go on, I do want to commit this lesson today to the Lord. So I want to pray for the pastor. Father God, we ask you, Lord, that you would touch pastor Echoes, Father God, that you would just continue to work on him, Father God, that you would continue to bring forth a word to minister to us, Lord, that you give him strength, Father God, anoint him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, Father God, so he will bring forth what you said to us, Lord, what you want us to hear, Father God, and then, Lord, prick our ears, Father, touch our hearts, Father God, so we may receive that word and that it won't <laughs> fall on stormy ground or stony ground, Lord. Please, Father God, help us to hear what you want us to hear, and, Lord, Help us to be doers of your word. And Father God, we ask you to touch Vashti and Michael, Lord, as they come forth, Father God, that you would anoint Vashti's voice, Father God, she will bring forth the songs from Zion, Lord. 
that you will sanctify, Lord, and that we will feel your touch, Lord. Yes, Lord. And Lord, pray, I pray that you touch Michael, Father God. We just want to anoint him for you for the entire, not only for us, Lord, but for each and every person that hears, Lord. Anoint us afresh, Lord. And we just thank you, Father God, because we need a fresh touch each and every day from you, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, um, the scripture lesson today comes from Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. And Pastor Echo's sermon is going to be, Have You Been Baptized? So in your reading, in your hearing, I'm going to read verses 1. He wants me to read verses 1 through 8. So in your hearing, chapter 1. The former treaties... Have I made, and this is just, this is a new King James Version. King, King James. James Version. I want to read that to you. Okay. The former treaties have I made, all dear prophet, dearest, of all that Jesus began, both to do and teach, until the day in which he, has, he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, have given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive, after his passions by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye should be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria unto the uttermost part of the earth. I just read the reading words of God to you. Amen. And God's word has already been blessed. Amen. That Amen. the word bless us. Amen. <coughs> Good morning, Pam. Good morning. Good morning. And I want to say a special happy anniversary to my parents. Thank you. Thank you. 34 years? Yes. Yes, 34 years. I had to do that math. I'm 32. Y'all good. <laughs> I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, yes, yes, yes. in what you hear, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King.
Yes. We exalt thee, O Lord. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Yes. We <laughs> Amen. Amen. We exalt the Lord, praise Him for His mighty acts. Yeah. Yeah. God has blessed, and if that child's math was correct, my oldest child <laughs> is 32, <laughs> but we're celebrating 34 years on tomorrow, June 14th, of mm-hmm. marriage, and we dated one year before that, we've been together for 15 years. And um, I thank God for blessing our matrimony. Blessing. Years. We've been together for 35 years. Okay. I thank God for blessing our. My, my math is not right. Blessing our matrimony and blessing our desire. From the very beginning of our relationship, we desired to please the Lord. We stepped into marriage. We did not uh, know hanky panky. <laughs> Somebody hit my wife looking like I'm crazy, but we. We held out uh, to after marriage to do anything, and we waited, had our children. Both kids have finished school and are college graduates. So all I can say is that God has blessed us. Amen. Amen. God has blessed us tremendously, not because of anything of ourselves, but because we just desired to do the thing right. And his hand of mercy has been upon us in spite of ourselves, our mistakes, our decisions. We've been through Many tests and trials, but God has been faithful. Amen. So I thank God today for uh, my wife, First Lady. I thank God. Uh, she's not my First Lady. She's my only lady. Yeah. Amen. Amen. She's my only. Maybe First Lady to the church, but she's the only lady to me. And um, we still do. We still love each other. We're still best friends. We get us up in nerves every now and then, but we just get over real quick and keep on going. Amen. 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 And because God's love is that which holds us together. We thank God for him today, for what he's done. But today, um, the scripture has been read before us, and I would not read, belabor you long. I want to pull out the eighth verse from that context and continue on from last week, what we had last week. So uh, with no further ado, Acts 1, 8, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, unto the utmost part of the earth. And my subject title this morning is a question. Have you been baptized? And I know uh, we hear baptism, uh, we think of water all the time. If I can get water out your head this morning and get you thinking about a spiritual baptism, I think we can move on our way in our journey today. When I was a kid, I remember, many of you may not know this, I was a kid, I was always drawn to church, even when my parents We're not going. I would go to Sunday school. Wherever I could find something open, I would go to Sunday school, vacation, Bible studies, although I had not been a member. So I started visiting Gillis Memorial. Many of you who who live in the city know what that is. The mainstream church at the time I joined, uh, Theodore Jackson Sr. was pastor. Um, And um, Pauline Well Lewis was the choir director. She brought in a lot of talents from outside of the city to come in. And she was one of the mainstream uh, radio, Christian radio broadcasters at the time. She was about four foot tall, but she could direct that choir. And I would go there. So I wanted to join Gillis. Many don't know that I joined Gillis for a short period of time. Then my parents started going to church, and they joined Cornerstone Church of Christ. By the way, today, Pastor Johnson, shout out to him. It's 30th anniversary, preaching anniversary today. Congratulations to him today. And I joined uh, Cornerstone as a, well, I didn't really, I was forced to join Cornerstone. <laughs> I was a member of Gillis, but my family had joined Cornerstone. And one day I was sitting in the balcony where all the mischievous kids sat at. We sat in the balcony so we could play and make fun and do everything, draw pictures and everything. We sat in the balcony. One day, uh, the opportunity, Dr. I. Logan Kears was pastor. He opened the door of the church. My father turned around, looked at me, and did this. 
That's how I joined porn star. <laughs> I just I joined video. No, that's my that's my testimony. How I got the cornerstone and there under under the guidance of uh, Dr. Kears, um, uh, we would I was taught and uh, I got baptized. What I'm trying to get to the story. He's a founder pastor. I got baptized as a child, and uh, when I got baptized, nobody really explained to me baptism. So I went in as a child mindset. I was only about nine or so, and I'm thinking, I'm going to go into this water, I'm going to come out, and I'm going to just be so pure. And the whole day I felt pure. It didn't last long. <laughs> <laughs> because a little did I understand what salvation was. So later on, I found out about salvation. And once I learned about salvation, I found out the baptism with water was symbolic of the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus, Jesus Christ. And I went back into the waters and got baptized with understanding. Yes. But uh, many of us will baptize out of tradition. And that means nothing is traditional. Mm -hmm. But when you understand the true meaning, we understand why baptism is, you go to the water to represent your death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And when this is the second time I got baptized. I got baptized with understanding. And by then I had received Christ as a young man, received Christ as my Savior and Lord. So um, what I'm trying to tell you is that uh, water does not change you. Mm -hmm. The baptismal waters do not change you. All symbolic. In our context this morning, in our text, we see that Jesus Christ, in his last words before he ascended, began to talk to his disciples to let them know that John baptized with water. He told them John baptized with water, but they would be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from then. So two baptisms are discussed in this chapter. And I'm going to ask you that question, have you been baptized? I'm going to ask you, have you been water baptized? I'm asking you, have you been baptized with the Spirit? John baptized, what John used, John used water to baptize. And that water was symbolic of repentance for those in his day. John was a great prophet. John the Baptist was a great prophet of God who was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. But John told those who followed him, people came out to the wilderness to hear him preach. The, the, the religious leaders came. He told them, don't get these waters unless you repent. John was a bold man, a, a soldier for Jesus Christ, but he was a forerunner of Christ. And John says that, they kept asking John's question, curiosity said, John, are, are, you, are you that prophet that should come? John said, no, I'm just a voice of one crying in the wilderness. That's all I can say in the day is a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. John said, I'm just a voice. He said, you know what he said about Jesus? He said, I baptize with water. But the one that's coming after me is preferred before me. Amen. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Yes. So I asked you this morning, have you been baptized? Yes. So Jesus, in his final words, begins to reflect upon John's ministry. He's about to leave the world, but he reflects upon John's ministry because John's ministry gives us a picture of what happens when you're truly baptized. <laughs> when you're truly baptized. You know, he says here that and, and there's so much controversy. About baptism of the Spirit. The Pentecostal believe one thing. The Baptist believe something. Conservative believe something else. And I'm just telling y'all, if I could retitle this message, I would just say I want everything God got for me. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Everything he's got for me. I don't have time to argue about the timing. Some people will say that there's, there's no such thing as a second blessing. I'm here to tell you there's a whole lot of blessings. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not talking about... I know we get, we, and when we receive Christ as our Savior and Lord, we get salvation. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He gives us salvation. His Spirit comes to live in us. He comes to indwell us. We're baptized into the body of Christ by the Spirit. But I'm telling you right now, there's another baptism. You need, you and I need this all, not just one time. We need it every day of our lives. We got to understand that when I actually have been baptized, have you come to a place in your life where God's spirit is filling your life? Amen. Are you in a place in your life where your uh, rivers of living waters are flowing out of you? Are you a person that has uh, joy and peace and love and long suffering? Are you a person of conviction and power? Are you a person who walks in the spirit at all times? If you are, God bless you. Mm -hmm. I'm not there yet. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. I'm just being real with you. But I'm telling you, there's more. There is more no matter where you are, no matter how long you walk with God, no matter how many experiences you have experienced with God, there's always room for more. 
Ephesians 5.18 tells us not to be drunk with wine, but to be filled with the Spirit. And in the Greek, that understanding is this, is be continuously filled. Be, don't just be filled one time. He says content, be being filled all the time. And guess what? That's not a com that's not a suggestion. That's in the uh, command. That is com a command. I'm asking this morning, have you been baptized? Paul is saying, he, in the command, he's saying that you are commanded to be filled with the Spirit at all times. I'm going to ask you this morning, are you there? I'm not there yet. But I thank God for the path that has been set. I thank God for the words of the Lord. I thank God for the purpose of God. I thank God for his power is available to all. We no longer have to wait like they did in chapter 8 because the Holy Spirit has already been given. All we need to do is receive. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Give God a praise right there. Amen. All I need to do is receive what God has already provided. I know you're saved, baby. I'm not questioning your salvation. I'm not questioning whether you speak in tongues. I'm not questioning your gifts. I'm not questioning those things. But I'm ask you, are you being baptized? Are you in a continuous place of being filled with God's spirit? And Jesus himself, I was uh, toying with this thought in my mind and saying, well, Michael, maybe you shouldn't preach that because it's so controversial. The Baptist is going to get mad at you. The Pentecostal will say you don't understand. But then I decided I was going to go with Jesus. Hey, Amen. give God Amen. a praise right there. I yes. decided I was going to go with Jesus. Amen. Yes, and Lord. so here in this eighth verse in particular, Jesus tells us what baptism in the spirit is. Y'all want to go with Jesus? Yes. I want to go with Jesus. Jesus told them they will be, they will be baptized not many days from there. And he says what the baptism is. He says, but you shall receive power. So the baptism is something that is to be received. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. It's not something you work up or make up or tarry for. It's something you receive because God has already given. You know what Jesus said in Luke chapter 11? He said that if a son would ask for bread, would you give him a stone? If he asks for a fish, we give him a serpent. He says, well, if you being evil know how to give good gifts, how much more will I give the Holy Spirit to those that ask? Amen. I want to ask you this morning, have you asked for the power? Mm -hmm. Have you asked for his power? Maybe, you you know, one thing, maybe I'll back up a little bit. Because if let me tell you what short, short, circuits, what short circuits the power, pride. Mm -hmm. Because we think, if you think today you've been saved, you've got it all together, you don't need anything else, then you're not going to get anything else. Exactly. If you think that you don't need this power, then you won't get this power. But if you're a person like me, who is thirsty, not thirsty for myself, but thirsty to do the will of God. If you're a person like me, you're thirsty to, to live the kind of life that God has called you to live. If you're like me, you hung in thirst after the righteousness. If you're like me, you find yourself faltering and falling and realizing you cannot do this without help. You cannot live this life without God's help. You cannot live this life independently of God. The Bible says walk in the spirit. Hey, hallelujah. That means live my life in the spirit. You know I'm talking about the Holy Spirit of God? Yes. I'm talking about the, the Holy Spirit of God who is not an it but a person who comes to live and reside in us. But now he not only wants to reside, he wants to preside. Yes. He doesn't just want to live in us. He wants to control us. And I know about you, but I want to be fully Holy Ghost controlled. He says, walk in the spirit. You know what he said? You walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Doesn't mean the lust of the flesh won't be there. I'm real with you. They're always there. But if you walk in the spirit, let the spirit take control of your life. You won't fulfill those lusts of the flesh. Mm -hmm. How many need God's spirit? Y'all want this power? Yeah, I'm talking right. about something I really need in my life. Mm -hmm. Jesus told his disciples, Beginning, my wife read verse 1, we ought to understand that Jesus was giving the things to the disciples. He said in the early in, the, in this chapter that he had begun to do the work. The things that Jesus both begun to do, he began to do the work, which means that his work is not done. His work on the cross is complete, but his work in saving the world had not been done. And what he's doing, when he leaves, he sends back the Holy Spirit. And now his work continues by the power of God's Spirit. We cannot do God's work without his power. We cannot do God's work without his anointing. Jesus himself was baptized by John. You got to read the text. I think it's in Luke chapter 4, 3 or 4. Jesus himself was baptized by John. And when Jesus stepped into that water, before he did any notable miracle, before he stepped out in the miraculous power, and the preaching power, he got baptized at the age of 30. And when he got baptized, the Bible says the heavens opened. 
And the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove descended upon him and stayed there. You got to understand what that means and stayed there. In the Old Testament, Holy Spirit didn't stay. He came as a dove. He came and he flew. He used someone. He would come and he would go. He would come and he would go. But here the Holy Spirit rested upon Christ. And the Bible says that by that same Holy Spirit, Jesus went out and was led by the Spirit. And when the Spirit of God fills your life, when he fills your life, that just means he controls my life. For whatever you feel with controls you. Amen. If you're filled with anger, that anger controls you. If you're filled with hate, that hate controls you. If you're filled with envy, that envy controls you. If you're filled with love, that love controls you. If you're filled with the Spirit, the Spirit controls you. I don't know what you're trying to be or what you want to do, but you cannot do without God's Spirit. I need God's Spirit. I need a spirit now. I need preaching power. I need clarity in my mind. I need God's spirit every step of the way. That's why I pray. Even while I'm talking, I'm praying. Say, God, guide my lips. Her spirit of living God, use me like he never used me before. Help me to speak with clarity. Help me, God, to get the message across. Because I had this thirst and this hunger, and I believe that the, the biggest problem of us today is that we need power. We've got everything. Just like in the in the uh in, in Ezekiel 37, the bones came together when Ezekiel preached. The bones came together bone upon bone. And the flesh came upon their bodies, but they were still lying there. They had all the organization together. They had the structure together, but they didn't have life. And when the when the uh, Ezekiel began to prophesy to the bones, he began to prophesy the bones came together, and then God told him to prophesy to the wind. And the wind came and gave life. That's what we need today. I don't know what you're looking for, but I need a fresh wind. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I can't create the wind, but you know what? I can put my sail up. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. This is yeah. what you got to do. I don't create the wind. We can't work the Holy Spirit up. You can't make them up. You let them fall. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Bible says he fell on them as they preached. He came upon them as they were doing. They prayed one time in the book of Acts. They prayed that God would give them both. The Holy Spirit filled them. Some of you call up on I don't need it. You think you don't need anything else? I need everything. Mm -hmm. I want everything that God has for me. Jesus talks about this baptism. He said, you shall receive power. So the baptism of the Spirit is reception of power. He says, after the Holy Ghost, it's not only a power, but it's a person. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes upon your life. Not only does he come in you to live, he wants to rest upon your life to control your life. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord, God, in the baptism, he said, the Spirit of the Lord, God, is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel. He's anointed me to set the captives free. And that's what it's all about, baby. It's not about you and I. It's about ministry. It's about being, having power to be a witness. I thought about my testimony I gave you last week about how the Spirit of God began to deal in my life at a young age. I didn't understand it. I wasn't seeking for uh, 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 an experience. I wasn't seeking for a second blessing. All I want to do is that God will use me to help somebody get saved. And I'm telling you right now, if you want to be anointed, you got to have a heart for people. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Yeah. you got to have a heart for the yeah. needs of people. That's how God, you want to know what your gift is? Let your heart be broken before God. And get involved with someone else's life. Stop being caught up in your own world. And look, ask the Lord, what can I do to help? And God will give you help. He called him a comfort. Amen. My desire was that the people get saved. And I didn't tell you the whole story because before I went down to the floor, the Spirit of God took my hands in, in a powerful way and put my hands on a woman I did not know. And I laid hands on a woman in front of me. Never did that in my life. Didn't know what was going on, but just being yielded by the Spirit. So God's anointing comes upon you to use you to be a blessing to someone else. Amen. How many want God to use you? Yes. God wants to use Some people are saying that those things aren't for the day. I want to let you know the same spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead. The same spirit that he walked in. The same spirit he gave his apostles uh, power. It's not a diminished version. We think in 2021 is less power. No, it's the same power. But what God is looking for is the vessel he can use. Will you say yes to the Lord today? So we see that the Holy Spirit is, is a power. But not only a power, he's a person. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. He's a person that wants to come in and live in you, come upon your life, to control your life. Not only that, he said, you shall be witness. There's a purpose for it. Powerful person, there's a purpose for it. You want to be a witness. I know we teach people go out and witness. Once you get saved, go out and witness. The Bible didn't say that. It says be a witness. It didn't say we're out to do something. It said be something. Some of us are so busy doing stuff, we don't even know who we are. 
you got to understand the Holy Spirit comes on you to make you a witness. What is a witness? Someone who's willing to lay it all down for God. That's what a witness is. The witness is someone who's willing to lay it all down for God. A witness is someone who has experienced something, who has an eyewitness account or an experience of something. Many of us can't communicate our faith because we don't really understand what it is about. You can't give something you don't have. But if you have it, you can give it. Peter said, silver and gold have we none, but such as we have, we give to you. You can tell somebody your testimony. How many know today your testimony of what God can do? He tells you the purpose of the Spirit coming upon you is not for salvation, it's for life. It's for power, for ministry. This is, this is what the baptism is for. It's not for like the Spirit comes when you, when you accept Christ as Savior Lord, the Spirit does come. You can't tell me if any man does not have the Spirit of God, he is none of his. When you receive Christ, the Spirit comes to live inside of you. But now he's living inside of you. Now he wants to use you. When we get saved, that's a drink. And we keep learning and growing, that's drinking of Lord, of the Lord. But when we keep on drinking, we get filled. And we, we are filled with God's spirit. I want to illustrate this to you. Can y'all remember back in the day, we used to call, this before my kids' time, we would call, they say get lit, we would say we're going we to go get pickled. Mm -hmm. We're going to get pickled, right? That's old, that's old saying, right? Let's go get pickled. I use this illustration because it, it aptly... It actually gives us a picture of what happens when the Spirit of God really fills our life. If you want to make pickles, you get the cucumbers, you put them in a jar, you get all your ingredients, your vinegar, your salt, and all the dill, whatever you want to put in there, you put that, you boil it, right? And what happens, you take that, you take that solution that you made, and you pour it into the jar of pickles. Hallelujah, somebody. You pour it into the jar of pickles, and what happens? You leave it there for some time. And what happens? The flavor from the solution begins to set in to the cucumbers. It changes their flavor. This is what happens when you're baptized, when God's spirit baptized. Baptism means to dip into. This is what happens when you're dipped in, when the spirit of God is poured into your life. That very flavor of who God is, that very flavor of his love, joy, and peace, that very flavor comes into your being. And you become more like him. You keep filling that jar and after a while, the jar gets filled. You keep filling that jar and after a while, that jar gets, begins to overflow. You see, when the spirit of God fills us, it overflows. His spirit is upon our lives. That's how God uses us. When God uses us, it's the overflow of what God put in our life. David said like this, he anoints me with oil. And my cup is now running over. I wonder if you got an overrunning cup this morning. If you got an overrunning cup, you, he'll give you joy. In the midst of sorrow. If you got an old burning cup, he'll give you peace in the midst of a storm. I'm talking about God's presence moving into our lives. Not for us to enjoy. We have his presence indwelling us. But for us to be used of God. Anybody want to be used of God? We can't do it in our own strength. We can't save anybody in our own strength. But God can use vessels like you and I to bring forth a word that will cause someone to have their life yes. turned around. Amen. That's what we want. We need God's spirit. One plants and one waters, but the scripture says it's God that gives the increase. We pray God give the increase. Amen. Jesus said this, Be, you shall receive power. It's a power of, from God. You shall receive the whole, after the Holy Ghost, a person will come upon you. You shall be a witness. That's the purpose of God coming upon you, Holy Spirit baptism. And then he gives them also a place. Amen. He says unto them, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the utmost parts of the earth. What is Jerusalem to them? Jerusalem, the place where they had ran from the Lord. Jerusalem, the place of failure. Jerusalem, the place of crucifixion. Jerusalem, the place that they don't want to, that's the last place they want to go back to. That's where it was hot. Everybody was being killed and persecuted for the faith. But Jesus, I want you to go to that place of trouble. Amen. That's why I want to tell the gospel. Some people don't believe the gospel has the power to change your place of trouble. But the gospel has the power to change your place of trouble. But Jerusalem is also a place of religion. That's where all the chiefs were. That's where all the Pharisees and scribes huddled in. But they were the very ones that persecuted Jesus and turned them over to the Romans. You got to understand it's a place of persecution. But I'm telling you the gospel of Jesus Christ, when you're anointed with God's word, he sends you into places of trouble. He sends you to places of false religion, and he gives you that kind of power. I want you, he said, I'm sending you now with, with purpose. I'm sending you now with power. I'm sending you now into a place where there's trouble. But then there's Jerusalem, there's Judea and Samaria. Judea and Samaria was a place where there was much prejudice. 
And I don't know about you, but today we need a word. We need a power that would step over these racial divides. Amen. Samaritans Amen. didn't speak to Jews, and Jews didn't have anything to do with Samaritans. That was religious. That was religious and racial problems going on in that day. But the gospel of Jesus Christ, he said, I want you to go to places where there's racial tension. You are now on these jobs, and there's racial tension. Don't join in with it, but be a, be a game changer. Be a peacemaker. Amen. Send out the love. God has sent you there. He's anointed you to make a difference where you are. I remember back in the day when I first went to uh, I first went to FedEx and started working there. Little did I know, I don't know how the word got out. This was uh, 36 years ago. Uh, I, the word got out that uh, Christians, me and my buddy got jobs at the same time. We're both Christians. The word got out that Christians were coming down there to work with them. <laughs> I don't know how they found out. We didn't go walk around telling everybody we say somehow they found out. And they tried, they tried to get it all together. And we went down there. That place got so peaceful. There was no confusion. Then when we left, we left that place. I come to find out this particular area we were lurking in. We left that place. There was total confusion. The courage was sitting in different rooms. We were full courage. The courage weren't speaking to each other. So I'm telling you right now that God has put you where you are to make a difference. Amen. So I don't know what you want to do. You want this power? All you got to do is ask God. Say, God, I know I'm saying I doubt my salvation. But Lord, I need some power to live this life. I don't know about you this morning, but I need power to live the life that God has called me to live. Have you got that power today? Have you really been baptized? I'm not talking about with water. I'm talking about with power. That's what baptism means to dip into, to be emerged. There's another illustration the Bible talks about when it talks about being baptized. Baptism was used when you was used to uh, when you refer to dying a garment. It say you get your dye and you mix your dye, and then you get the garment you want to dye. You put that garment into that dye until what happens? That garment turns the same color as the dye. That's what God wants to do in our life. He wants us to be so saturated in His Spirit that we begin to walk like Jesus. We begin to talk like Jesus. We begin to respond yes. like Jesus. We begin to do the thing that the Lord has called us to do. I don't know what you want, but I'm thirsty this morning. I want more of all that God has for me. Somebody talk about there's no such thing as a second blessing. No, I don't believe in the second blessing. I believe in the second blessing. I believe in the third blessing. Yes. I believe in the fourth blessing. Yes. I believe God wants us to experience his power every day. Be not drunk with wine, which is the excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit of God. Yes, How many Lord. want to be filled with God's Spirit? Yes. All you got to do is ask God to fill me afresh with your Spirit. Then you trust Him to do that, but you know you got to come with a heart that's thirsty. If you think you got it all together, you won't get any more than what you got. But I come before God as an empty pitcher, and I say, fill me, Lord. Yes. Fill me, Lord, yes. afresh with your power. Lord. I need you to walk right. I need you to talk right. I need you to minister right. I need you to every aspect of my life. I don't know what you need today. Maybe this message is just for me today. But I want more. I want all that God has for me. I want everything he's got. I want all his power because God is looking for a few vessels he can use, a few men, a few women. He said the last days he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. The sons and where my daughter's at? The sons and the daughters will prophesy. The young men would see visions and the old men, I guess that's me, would dream some dreams. I'm waiting for that to come as God is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. He's not just using the sons. Where my daughter's at? He's using the daughters to bring forth a word of prophecy. I'm here today to tell you that same spirit that fell on the day of Pentecost. We don't need another Pentecost. Pentecost has come and Pentecost has done, has, has come and gone. But what we need is a, pe a preparation. We need a continuation of a Pentecost. We need to walk in the thing that started the church. It's the same thing that's going to keep the church. I don't know what you need today, but I know what I need. I need power. Yes. I need his power. Yes. In order to have his power, you got to have that person presiding inside of you. So I want you to know all you got to do is desire Recognize you gotta have that desire to say, Lord, I need your power in my life. Then you gotta present yourself. Desire and then present yourself a living sacrifice. Then you gotta ask. Then you gotta ask God. If you ask him, he will do it. You gotta ask him, and then you gotta believe that he's gonna do what you're asking him to do. God will never turn you down when you come to God. When you come to God, ask him for something to do, some power to use to be a blessing. 
God will never turn you around. When you ask him for something for yourself to glorify yourself, he will turn you down. When you ask for power to do something that God has called you to do, God will never turn you down. He will always give you what you need because when he calls you, he will provide for you. Yes. All you got to do is ask him this morning. Yes. I don't know what you want to do, but I want to challenge you to ask this morning. Yes. Stop being satisfied. Stop being satisfied where you are. Some of us are praying the same old prayers, preaching the same old sermons, walking the same old way. Because it worked back then, we think it's going to work all way. But God is calling you Zion to a higher place. Yes. God is calling you Zion to a higher place of praise, a place of victory, a place where he can use us. He's looking for somebody he can channel his power through. And I don't know about you, but with all my life, I say yes to the Lord. Yes. I say yes to his will. I say yes to his way. I want him to use me like he never used me before. Yes. Yes. I'm telling you today, Read that verse, Acts 1-8, meditate on it, and ask God to speak to your heart by it. Amen. You need a man, even a theologian, to define it for you. Because Jesus himself told you, it's about a reception of a power. The reception and the work of a person. He told you right there, the purpose is to be a witness. And then he gives you a place to go to use that power. Amen. Amen. He tells you right there what it is. You don't need a, a dictionary. You don't need to be a Greek scholar. All you need to open up the book and say this with me. I say, I know what other people are saying, but I'm going with Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. How many going with Jesus? Yes. I'm going with Jesus. So my question is, have you been baptized? You, only you can answer that. Hallelujah. If you've never experienced the infusion of God's power, ask him to come in. You're trying to stop cussing? Ask for power. Mm -hmm. You're trying to stop being a flirtatious? Ask for power. You want to put down that pornography? Ask for power. You want to walk a new kind of walk? Ask for power. You're dealing with envy and jealousy? Ask for power. You want to be a witness for God? Ask for power. You want to serve God to the max? Ask for power. You want God to use your life? Ask for power. James said it like this. You have not because you, ask. because you ask not. And you ask and you don't receive it because you ask it for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you the right reason that God wants to fill you is to make you a witness. Amen. 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 Let me tell you the difference. I'm about to close. The difference in trying to witness and being a witness. Trying to witness, you can go out and tell people stuff and have your little Spill spiritual laws, talk to someone. They may accept, they may not accept. But being a witness is illustrated like this. Here's a lady who's been dating a man. My wife can relate to this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and one day, he proposes to her and gives her this big old diamond. The next day she goes to work you don't have to ask her to be a witness. <laughs> She's gonna show up you know what she's doing? She has been enraptured by the love and what's happening to her. She can't keep that hand down. Why? Not because she's not trying to be a witness. She is a witness. Yeah. She's a witness of the love of that man. And I don't know about you, but I'm a witness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Of the love of that man. Amen. His Amen. name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. So when you're a witness, you don't have to try to be a witness. The Bible says when the Holy Ghost comes on you, you'll be. Hey, Amen. glory to God. Amen. Nobody has to, nobody dragging people to go to church and dragging people to go to Bible study and dragging people to read their Bibles. That's because they need power. Amen. Hey, Amen. because the Holy Spirit touches your life, you don't have to have my drag you. you. You throwing yourself out the bed. You're moving by yourself. And if you're not, you ask God to give me spiritual power. Give me spiritual hunger and thirst that I can now grow to be what you call me to be. And God will do it for you. Amen. The Amen. Bible says this in Philippians. He says that it's God that works in you. Isn't that good news? Mm -hmm. Guess what he does? Both to will, that's my want-tos, and to do, that's how I do it, of his good pleasure. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. It's God that's in you doing these things. You understand? We got to get out of the flesh. We think we're just performing and doing stuff because we want to do it. You got to ask the Spirit of God, take control of my life. Let me walk in the Spirit and live in the Spirit and respond to the Spirit. 
And I go through these lessons and I, I go through these tests and I'm preparing all week long and, 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 and my, my mind I've been engrossed with dealing with God's spirit. So you might hear this for a while. I've been in there because I recognize that the need of the church, the need of, now listen to this, the need of the hour is power. Hey, because a whole lot of religions out here, whole lot of mindsets up here, you can't reason with people when they got their minds locked in. But when God's spirit uses you, he pierces through every argument and tears down every stronghold. It gives you the words to say to reach people where they are. We need power to reach the Lord. The darkness is darker than ever before. We need power to tell a young man, you're not a woman. Mm-hmm. Tell that woman, you're not a man. God did not design you that way. To tell them a way that's not condemning, but a way that pierces to the heart. Mm-hmm. So they'll come out saying, what must I do to be saved? Amen, somebody. Amen. We need power in these dark days. We got to bypass. You don't have to know all the answers. We don't have all the answers. But you know Jesus. Amen. And his spirit in you will give you the words. Give you the know-how to do what you need to do. So yes, prepare yourself to do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Prepare your lessons, your message, whatever God's called you to do. But make sure the vessel is prepared. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, yeah. somebody. That's yeah. the, that, that is the biggest challenge. To be used in presenting ourselves a living sacrifice, the biggest challenge is presenting ourselves. We want to help people, but do we need help first? Mm-hmm. We want to give people wisdom, but are we walking in wisdom? Mm-hmm. We want to give people information, but are we walking in that? So, Lord, fix me so I can help my brother and my sister. For how can I tell my brother that he has a splinter in his eye? When I'm walking around with a big two by four mm-hmm. in my eye, mm-hmm. Jesus said, first, remove your stuff. Amen, somebody. Tell your neighbor, remove your stuff. Remove he your said, stuff. then you what's going to happen. Then you're going to see clearly mm-hmm. to help your brother. I want to be in that place where the vent is so I can see clearly to help my brother. He told Peter that when you're converted, once you're converted, help your brother. Mm-hmm. Satan decides to sit you as weak. But Jesus said, I pray for you. Once you're converted, he said, strengthen your brother. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's what we want to be. Amen. We want to be a blessing. So I'm asking God for everyone under the sound of my voice this day. I'm asking God for him to give us a holy hunger for more of what he has for us. Yes. A discontent with my life, my spiritual life. I'm discontent. I'm satisfied with Jesus. But is he satisfied with me? Mm. I'm satisfied with all the things he's done for me. Now I want him to clean me to make me more like him. Amen. And I can't do this on my own, but I'm not on my own. Amen. 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 I've got his holy power inside of me. Not only living, but I want somebody to get this. I want to live in the overflow. Hey, Amen. glory be Amen. to God. Glory be to God. I want to live in the overflow. Live to make a difference. That when you walk in, someone knows that that's a man or woman of God in the midst. Amen. Amen. Not because of what they say, how many crosses they have around their their necks, how many titles before their name, but because there's a presence of God that's there. There's a light that's shining so bright that it has to either draw them or it'll send them. Amen. So we thank God today for that light. Moses had that light shine so bright that people didn't want to look at him. That was under the old covenant. But now we got a brighter light, a one that won't fade away. And I'm here to tell you, that's good news. Amen. 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 That's good news. Yeah. This spirit that comes in our life, you know what Jesus said? He's coming upon you. The spirit of God came upon Christ and lived there, abode there, stayed on him, and led his life. He said to us, that Jesus said to us that he would never leave you. The Holy Spirit will be in you. Once you have him, he'll be in you forever. Amen. Amen. So I thank God for that. We don't have to pray like David. Take not my, my Holy Spirit away. David saw Saul. Saul served God. And when Saul stopped serving God, God's spirit was lifted off his head. And David mm-hmm. prayed, don't let that happen to me, Lord. Amen. As a child of God, you don't have to worry about that. Because when the spirit comes in, he's in the stay. I'm, I'm done with you today. I just want to tell you that. Mm-hmm. I remember, um, I'm about to close. 
It's <laughs> <laughs> my third, fourth clothes. I remember when um, I was a kid coming up in church. I remember so often um, I would I would uh, hear the pastor say, "Get saved, get saved." And I remember when I think I told you my story. I went and asked God into my life, but because my hands didn't look new, my feet didn't look new, I I, th- I assumed I didn't get saved. But when I look back on it, I realized when I asked him, and he came into my heart. I begged him in the bathroom. I remember the bathroom. I remember that moment. I begged him into my life. And I just remember all through the years, I tried to go out and do what I wanted to do, but God's hand never left me. Mm-hmm. Aren't you so glad that he never Amen. leaves you? He never left. I left him, mm. but he never left me. Amen. And then after I think I was old enough to realize what was going on, I was able to come back and say, Lord, I'm a backslider. Take me back into your arms. And realize he saved me from a child. So it doesn't take a whole lot, y'all. Just ask God into your life. And uh, ask him into your life and ask him to make yourself real to you. Amen. 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 And you'll know that you're saved when you're saved because he changes your heart direction. Mm-hmm. The things you used to want to do, you no longer want to do those things. The places that used to satisfy, you no longer bring you satisfaction. He turns you. He turns you in a way, a new direction. Yes, the flesh is going to try to pull you back. But great is he that's in you, that he doesn't worry. He'll try to pull you back. But the Spirit of God changes your direction. Amen. He comes to live. You can't be content and live in filth. You can't be content and to live disobediently when God's Spirit, he won't let you rest that way. Amen, somebody. Amen. Somebody need to hear that today. But he comes in. He comes in to save you and turn your life around. I don't know. I have all I can do to you is recommend him this morning. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I am a witness of what he can do. But I'll recommend Jesus to you today. Amen. If you need your life turned around, invite him in to be your savior and be your Lord. God bless you. Come on, my Amen. 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 Well, thank you for once again visiting this household, visiting the hearts and the homes. Everybody that's under the center of our voice, Lord, Lord, please let this word penetrate the hearts. Make fresh soil of these people that are under the center of our voice. Let them to produce the fruit that you want them to produce, Lord. Allow them to produce the, the fruit of love, of joy, of peace. Let everybody that comes in contact with them be able to come in contact with you, Lord. Allow us to share your love with everybody that we come in contact with, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for the baptism. Thank you for baptizing me every day. (laughs) You you know me better than I know myself, Lord. I know I'm not perfect. I know you know that I'm I'm less than, less than, less than perfect. But yet you love me. Thank you, Lord. Yet you keep saving me. Yet you keep sustaining me. Yet you, you keep healing me. Even though I know I do stuff that would be detriment to myself at times. Eating the things that I shouldn't be eating. Going to places I may not be supposed to be going. Keeping a mindset that isn't of you, Lord. Please, continue to work on me, Lord. Yes, yeah. Lord. Mm. Thank you for taking hold of my heart, Lord, and let me see what is wrong in my ways. The only way to fix what's wrong is to acknowledge what is wrong first. Thank you for that understanding, Lord. Thank you for changing my heart so I can actually continue to inspire to be like you, Lord. You came to this earth so to to be the example of how we are to live. Please help us. Give us the will. Give us the want. Give us the desire to live as you lived. And love thy neighbor as we loved ourselves. But love you first. Lord, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for everybody on the center of my voice. Please go visit them personally. Allow them to have a personal relationship with you individually. We're not here to make people shout. We're here to get people saved. We're here to bring people eternal life. Here to usher them to you, Lord. Help us to help them seek you and all that they do, all that we do. Lord, please continue to keep your hand on this ministry and keep your hand on, the, on everybody in the world right now, Lord. Because
got so much pain, so much destruction, so many twisted mindsets. That's, but you have the you have the power to change anything that you want, Lord. We just have to actually make you our Lord and Savior. So I want to bend the knee emotionally toward you, Lord. You are my Lord. Yes. You are my Savior. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Use me as your hands on this earth, Lord. Yes. Lord, please give the same desire to everybody on the sound of my voice. If we just bent the knee, there will be no issues left in this world. We know that you are coming back. But you will give us eternal life, Lord. Song back in the day. Have you got good religion? Certainly, Lord. Got good religion? Certainly, Lord. Have you got good religion? Certainly, Lord. Certainly, 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 Lord. Everybody's kind of mind. That's an old song, y'all. But we got some good stuff. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for His good pleasure. Amen. All the things He's doing in our lives. I want to challenge you, my family. Challenge you. To get before God and ask Him to fill you afresh Amen. with His Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm going to do it every day in my life. Every time I think about it, because I need Him. Oh my Lord, I need Him in such a desperate way. I need Him. In this is hour, we need power. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my family. Love you. Thank you for all your well wishes. Thank you for your uh, continued support. We couldn't do anything without your support. Thank God for you. Um, as my wife mentioned earlier, we have outreach. outreach on the 26th, and God has touched people's hearts to just give so many things that we have uh, plenty of things to give away. But, so we can start for um, July, <laughs> collecting for July. We're good for June. We have, we've got so many things coming in. So we thank God for his blessings, overflow of blessings that he's done. Uh, for us to be able to be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. Amen. So thank God for you. Amen. Amen. Give you a hand today. For all the things God is doing through your life. Yes. Amen. Never, never take for granted that God has you living. God has a purpose for you. And that God's spirit one of you. Just power is not for the pastors, the, the leaders. The power is for the church, the sons, and the daughters. Amen. Amen. I thank God for that. Amen. And old folk, I'm going to get some dreams. Amen. <laughs> the young men says for everybody it's the promise of God's spirit and I want to encourage you to flow in the spirit of God that he might use you like you never used before God bless you for my family you'll be love you be back with us on Friday night we're um, probably going to close out this month and take a couple uh, a month break for Friday night Bible study for Ju um, July and August and come back in September so come on back be with us for the next couple weeks as we close out this portion of study we're still in Romans and uh, I encourage you to come and be with us in that uh, life-changing um, study we're in and then next Sunday morning at 9 Sunday school and then back with us again 11 a.m. So God bless you my family. Mm -hmm. We pray God's richest blessings upon your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.